Hey, Coach. I uh, wanted to ask you first about Dominic. Um, about Dominic Johnson. How did he look yesterday, his first day without green on? I thought he looked good, Trey. Um, you know, I still think it's up in the air whether we'll play him or not this week, but I think he certainly has Im improved over the last week and a half. Uh, obviously, we have today to look at him as well. Um, we'll just have to see how he feels. And and uh, he looked to me like he's ready to go, but we'll have to kind of see how he feels about it uh, before we decide. And I think we still have two pretty good days that, that – um, that uh, he can uh, build some confidence and, and see if he's ready to play or not. I, to be honest with you right now, it's kind of up to him. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in the spring, you, you'd start Kari Johnson out at cornerback and then you worked, moved him over to middle safety. And I remember you saying, we felt like we just needed some more guys who knew how to play middle safety. How beneficial was that time? How much work did he get, first of all, at middle safety in the spring? And, and how beneficial has that been carrying over to now? Well, he got, I, I, I'm going to guess here, but I think it's a pretty educated guess. I think he had about half the spring at, at safety, and then we moved him over to corner. Um, you know, again, I think COVID taught us a lot about interacting, interchanging defensive backs, offensive linemen, things of that nature to uh, be prepared if you had some injuries. And, and uh, so certainly we're uh, pleased that we did that. We know he's a good player. Um, and, uh, so we're looking forward to, if he, if he's the guy back there, then we're looking forward, uh, to seeing him play. I think he'll play well. Thanks, Coach. Coach? Yeah, Coach, on the teleconference today, I think you said something like, you know, from week one to week two, you put a lot of emphasis on maybe improving your team. Uh, like, uh, I'm curious if there's any maybe points of emphasis this week that you're really focusing on, you know, yourselves. That you and how do you feel like y'all have progressed in those areas? Well, I think it's it's a little bit of, of pre-snap, you know, right motions, right reads, right communication. Um, I'm talking about on on both sides of the ball, not necessarily the motion, but but uh, reading keys, communication off of that, um, trying to win the game uh, on what we know mentally. Uh, trying to see the game played before the snap of the ball on both sides of the ball, uh, straining, finishing blocks better, uh, being better tacklers. You know, go back and and we can learn some things from fundamentals, throw and catch the ball uh, better, uh, things of that nature. And we don't have a problem of playing hard or playing physical. Didn't have many loafs at all in the game. It's just um, you just want to be a little bit crisper uh, and I think you'll try to get that each and every week but once you actually see yourself in that particular season on tape uh, I think you can learn a lot from that both as a coaching staff and and players uh, and I think that you know the, after the game it felt like we had it didn't feel like we had lost the game but it certainly didn't feel like a a top 25 win and uh I think that's where you want your program, but at the same time, um, uh, you know, you'd like to celebrate wins as well. I had a good talk with them about that after the game. But I think all of those things, I think our, we have a mature team that's, that's now won uh, several games, and I think they understand that we have a lot of work to do. So we, we, we certainly are respectful of South Carolina and, and watching video and trying to see – see what they do and all those things, but we have a lot of work to do, like I explained, on ourselves. And then I know Simeon Blair seems like he's kind of become more of a vocal guy uh, back there. If if you don't have Catalan, how much how much of a help is it to have a guy like Blair still back there at safety? Well, I think it's huge. He's played a lot of games, you know, and, and he, to be honest with you, he was kind of the vocal guy of, of the safeties. You know, Cat certainly was vocal as well, but um, he's, he's embraced that role. Um, we need him to be that guy. Uh, he's very smart and, uh, plays extremely hard. And so, uh, uh, I've been real pleased with his, uh, performance over the last, uh, two days as well. So I, I, I think it's a big deal to answer your question. Bob.
Uh, hey, Sam, a after looking at the game tape and especially, you know, and I'm wondering your evaluation of, of how uh, Jaden Hazel would play and especially that touchdown catch where you see like three defenders down like, you know, bowling pins or whatever. Just wonder what you thought of his game and what your expectations are for him moving forward. I, again, I think you'd probably have to ask him, Bob, how he feels, but I, I'm saying uh, that he's having fun. Seems to be playing much faster now than he was in the spring. Uh, he was a very good blocker on Saturday. Uh, certainly uh, the little quick pitch that we ran to him, the sweep around the edge was a big play in the game. Uh, you can tell KJ believes in him because he kind of threw it up, you know, in a crowd and, and it was a great pass. Don't get me wrong. It was, and only he could catch it, but uh, KJ has great confidence in him and he went and got it. So uh, I, I anticipate him just getting better and better as his confidence uh, and his knowledge of exactly where to be at, at what time on the field increases. I think he's going to have a really, really good year as, as I felt like he played a good game, both blocking, running, and receiving uh, on Saturday. And then Jordan Dominic's not often, I don't think, that a guy plays off the bench and gets an SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week award or, you know, whatever award they might be giving out. Um, how cool do you think that was? And do you see him maybe getting more snaps um, as things go forward? You know, I don't know uh, where his snaps. Uh, I, I would assume that he'll, he'll increase some. Uh, we feel very good about our four defensive ends at – that are playing on a regular basis. Um, but I don't, again, I don't know if he'll increase his reps or not. Um, it should be go up a little bit, but it is really cool that, um, you know, I showed in a team meeting where he was on the group of four that we weren't really happy with the effort on the play. And from that day on, he's, changed the way that he practiced and and it wasn't like as a week it might have been day two in the in the fall camp and I go hey we, we we can't do this you know we can't win this way and he started that day he started practicing extremely hard and he's gotten a lot better from it and I'm really really pleased he's on the team and really pleased he had some success on Saturday well, what'd you think about him getting that SEC award you know his first game ever for you guys yeah, I mean, isn't that cool? That's neat, you know, for him. And I'm sure that will give him added confidence as, as well. Thanks. Scotty. Hey, Sam, I wanted to ask you about Terry Hampton. He flashed for you a couple of times last weekend. Uh, where do you think he's developed maybe the most since he got to you guys? To be honest with you, I think it's just his leg is healed. You know, I mean, from, from when he first got here, he, he wasn't cleared with his injury and um, his quickness has certainly increased. He's always been really, really strong and uh, he did a nice job this summer as well with that. But knowledge, uh, he, he's better with his hands. He gets good knock back um, and he plays extremely hard. I mean, he's a hard guy to block, I think, and at least he's hard for us to block and uh, look like he certainly made some plays against Cincinnati and, I think he was a great kid out of the transfer portal and wonderful kid as well. And, and uh, you know, he's one of our our top interior guys. He He's as good as any of them that we have up there. And my second thing was um, I think Pooh played the most snaps at your linebacker spot beyond your starters. Uh, what inspired y'all's confidence in him to maybe put him out there as, as that first guy uh, beyond your starters? Yeah. Um, you know, he's been here longer, uh, so we, we've we seen him more, um, uh, able to get a little more trust in him because we've seen him more. But I really like him. I think he's going to be a really good linebacker. And I thought 17, we might want to play him a little bit more than that plays. But um, as it goes on through the season, we're going to need him more and more, and, and we're, we'll be able to do that. But uh, just the fact that we've seen him do it in practice, he can really run. He's in better shape. He wasn't in great shape when he got here, so he's in better shape now. And and I I just trust him, uh, trust his reads, 
Uh, he had a problem with that when he was learning the defense, and now he's seemed to be very knowledgeable with what we're asking him to do. And he's always been talented to do it. It's just, you know, we had a little bit of learning curve there, like all young kids do. Tom. Hey, Sam, if I saw the stats right, you guys were eight of 16 on third down conversions, uh, both on offense and defense. I wonder what you thought of your conversion rate. And, and Cincinnati's were in spurts, their first possession, yeah. and their first possession of the third quarter. What did you think of those? Well, we have to get – we have to be better than that on defense and, and offense. And 50% offensively is not that bad depending on the down – you know, the distance, you know. But um, – uh, we 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 certainly made some key third downs, and a lot of them were catches. You know uh, uh, that the receiver Trey had a really nice one. Warren Thompson had a really nice one, and and of course KJ, you know, had some nice runs in there. Um, I thought the offensive staff did a good job with their short yardage type uh, game plan. Uh, we've got to be better on defense, getting off the field. Uh, but you're right; it was spurty. You know, and and even to the fact that I think they had three first downs in the first drive, and they converted them. You know, before Nudie was able to pick the pass, so uh, we certainly are, are aware of that. We're working on it. Um, uh, we'd like to be uh, certainly lower than that, much lower than that, and a little higher. You know, if you're in the 60s, you're 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 clicking along really good on offense. You know, and and uh, so we, we're we're striving to to clean up the details of why we didn't make the first down, you know, and that's really what we've been doing this entire week of details of, and we do have good players and we just got to clean the details up to, to be more successful. We asked Shane Beamer about this on the SEC teleconference today. There's parallels between so Arkansas and South Carolina came into the league the same year They have relatively new coaches, both of them seemingly on the rise. I mean, do you kind of maybe see some, parallels and, and, and coaches who are really passionate about the schools they're coaching at too. Do you, do you see those kind of comparisons? I do. You know, when Shane got the job over there, I called him and obviously congratulated him and, and um, um, it was a big deal for him. You know, he was, he was again, like I was, it, he was emotional when he went into the stadium. I remember watching that video of him and, and it mean, you know, it just meant something to him. I, I do think there's something to be said for that. You know, I, I, you don't have to uh, have the love like I do for Arkansas to have success here. I, I get that. But, you know, you go back to Kirby and he played at Georgia, you know, and, and so he's, he's passionate about it. And I'm sure every coach that's coaching out there is passionate about their place. It's just easier uh, when you're myself or Kirby or, or Shane, where they've been there and they understand how good the place can be, uh, not necessarily what they inherited, but how good it can be. And and instead of, you know, laying around and woe is me and I don't have a roster, I don't have this, I don't have that, uh, most of those coaches just go to work because they know what they can have if they go to work. And And I think Shane's a lot like that as well, hopefully, as I am. And and uh, I know Kirby is as well because I worked with him over there and I know his love for the University of Georgia as well. So I think there's I think it's a big deal and and uh, certainly is for me. Quick question about Jaheim Bell, their, their number zero. Uh, they uh, he's listed as a tight end. He, he had seven or eight carries. Seven, the other day. Eight, yeah. What do you think about that whole scheme, the way they u- utilize personnel? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, he plays everything. He takes tosses out of the backfield. I mean, um, obviously they've got a lot of trust in him first of all and and he's earned that because of his athletic ability he makes it a little bit of a nightmare because you don't know where he's going to line up you know and really that puts you in a what personnel are they in type situation too because they're using him at three different positions basically and uh but we're gonna have to know where he is and and uh be physical when whenever he gets the ball because He's a hard guy to bring down. Mason. Yeah, Coach Beamer had talked about when, when he was at Georgia, the recruiting process of Drew Sanders. I don't know if – were you, do you remember any of that and maybe seeing him at camp when you were at Georgia there? Uh, I wish I did. I, 
I'd lie to you if I said I remember any of that. I, I don't. Um, you know, I would, as an offensive line coach, a lot of times I was in my own world recruiting, you know, um, just offensive linemen. But uh, I, I know that Glenn Schumann thought he was a great player. I do know that. And we, we wanted him at Georgia. Just unfortunately uh, for us, when I was at Georgia, he went to Alabama. But I, I know that there was a lot of talk about him. And then I know after the game, you talked about how you kind of liked what you saw from A.J. Green and Rashad Dubinian. I mean, with Dominique maybe coming back, just what does that, you know, carry situation look like, including Rocket as well? Well, I think it'll – obviously, there's only so, so many plays you have out there, so it's going to affect uh, all three of those guys um, because we believe in Dominique, and and uh, I thought he was, if not our top running back, one of our top two last year, and, and uh, um, he certainly was one of our top two. I can promise you that. And, and uh, we're waiting to get him back, and I think it'll – you know, those guys have – have certainly improved with AJ and, and R dub. Um, but there's so many carries you can give away. And certainly we we're going to give the carries to Dominique when he, when he gets back, it's just how many, I don't know. And probably a lot of it dictates how the game's going when he's in there. Right. Yeah. Coach, uh, to Crawford's Crawford is on the participation for, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if he got any, um, reps on offensive line. Is that something that you try to, you want to maybe in the future work him in or was, I know it was a close game, so it might've been hard to, to get him in. Well, you know, again, we have those meetings in the morning uh, or at night this, this week, it'll be Friday night late because it's an early game. I don't want to have the staff meeting in the morning, but in that meeting, we had said we were going to play him. You know, I wanted to play him. Coach Kennedy wanted to play him. And then the game was so tight and, and we, you know, at times we struggled and things of that nature and, and uh, we just didn't get him in. Now I know coach Kennedy called him and talked to him because I, I believe he's a really, really good player. Uh, we'd like to get him in uh, certainly against South Carolina because we believe in him uh, just, and I've been that way as an online coach too. I've told kids, Hey, we're going to play you and, Finally, I just said, hey, third series, you're going in. Set on the bench, you're going in. And it kind of worked out a little bit better that way. But unfortunately, we had planned on playing him, and we didn't. And we haven't had that conversation with him. Uh, but he's a good player, and we need to play him. And with Malik, uh, I know you'd kind of change maybe your thought process on that in fall camp with the other wide receivers really stepping up. Yeah. Uh, with the packages that we saw, is that about the number of reps we can expect in the future? <clears throat> Something you've maybe changed game to game. Well, I think I'd like to amp it up just a little bit, you know. Um, maybe another two or three, not not drastic, Trey, but maybe you know, maybe another two or three plays, something new uh, uh, each week, kind of put something new out of that package. Um, but I, I really like our wideouts where they're at right now. I do. I like Landers and Warren and and uh, certainly Hazelwood, and I like Keytron, you know, Keytron Jackson even. Even with him, as good a player as he is, he didn't he didn't get the reps that uh, that I you know we were hoping to get. But you know, there's just not enough room to go around. You know, not enough plays right now, and so we have to be very conscious of that as well. And uh, certainly at the quarterback spot, Fortin is playing really well, and uh, so it allows us to do that a little bit more. But you have a problem of do you want to take Matt Landers or Hazelwood or Warren Thompson off the field, you know? And so uh, if, if we did that, it'd be maybe two or three more plays a game, Trey, not, not a, not a tremendous amount. Thanks coach. Wrap us up, Bob. Hey Sam, it's not often you can bring a defensive back off the bench. You started, I think 11 games the year before for the Tino won the national championship. Um, you were able to do that with Brainy, and he may be playing a bigger role now. Um, how do you think he played, and just how do you think he's fitting in? Since I guess he didn't go through spring ball, he didn't get here until uh, uh, summer. Well, I think if you asked Brainy, he'd say, "Hey, I got to get better." You know, um, again, uh, he's still uh, trying to get all the uh, uh, defense in. 
uh, in his mind and, and make sure that he's right and so he can play fast. He has had a really good week this week. Uh, we're in great situation there if if Cat or Slush can't play and and we'd be in a good situation with having Brainy. It was a it was a big get for us, and I anticipate uh, if he's the guy that. Uh, he'll certainly play well. It's a big deal, uh, Bob, because he's he's had that experience, you know, over it in his career. So it's not going to be – he's not going to be a fish out of water out there. I, I can't remember the lineman's name, but uh, I guess yesterday Shane Beard mentioned the first time he was aware of you, you, you were in North Carolina and signed some offensive lineman. I think he would have been at Virginia Tech, and it was like, how did North Carolina get that guy? And I guess that, you know, oh, no, that was a defensive lineman. I think that's oh. probably why he was. Uh, we signed Robert Quinn, who was a 17th pick. Great, play, great guy and great player at North Carolina. Played forever. I don't know if he's still playing or not, but he played at, up to last year. I don't know if he's still on the roster, but he was a defensive end. And I'll be honest, I don't know how we got him either. You know, I can give you a story if you want it. Yeah, sure. Your stories are always good. Well, we got to work that morning of signing day, 6 a.m. in the morning. And Coach Butch Davis said, have you talked to Quinn yet? I said, no, Coach, I talked to him last night, and he still didn't know what he was going to do. And he said, well, call him. And I said, well, Coach, it's, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. He said, call him. And uh, so, so I texted him. and. And all those kind of things. And then his mother, and I text his mama, and his mother texts back. And he, she said, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be excited here in a little bit, you know. And she kind of let the cat out of the bag, you know. And then later on that day, Rob decided he was going to be a Tar Heel. And, and uh, Rob had told, bless his heart, rest his soul, John Blake, because John Blake was a D line coach at the time, and Blake had went in there and because Alabama was recruiting him hard, and Blake said, "You're gonna go to Alabama, and their running back coach is recruiting you." And Quinn looked right at me. He said, "Well, if I go to North Carolina, <laughs> the whole line coach is recruiting me there." You know, <laughs> Blake had a huge ego; it crushed him. You know, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we were fortunate enough to get Rob and and. Uh, I think Shane was at South Carolina at the time, maybe. And Robert was from South Carolina. So okay. I think that was a, I think that was the deal. Is that something you guys talked about when you were at Georgia together? Like, man, how'd you get that guy from us or anything? Or No, no, no. At that time, we were just trying to – we weren't very good. You know, we went seven and five that first year at Georgia, and we was, we was just trying to hold on. We ended up winning the bowl and finished eight and five. And, and – uh no, we were all just trying to, trying to save our jobs, you know. And but I really enjoyed Shane when 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 I was there at, at Georgia with him. Thanks, thanks, Santa. That's 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 a good story. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you Saturday, I guess. Thanks, guys. Go Hogs. <laughs>